Tonight on Connecticut's news station, gas station murder. A man arrested and accused of killing another man that he knew. We have the latest details. Also, emergency over. This virus is here to stay. It's still killing and it's still changing. The World Health Organization downgrades COVID-19's threat, but find out the dangers remaining in the pandemic. It's the light at the end of the tunnel we have all been waiting for. Some sunshine returning just in time for the weekend. The changes ahead coming up. Also, former President Trump questioned as he faces rape accusations. You know it's not true, too. You're a political operative also. New video released from the deposition of his civil trial. And one win away, the Hartford Wolf Pack try to close out their playoff series on home ice. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin tonight with breaking news here at 10. Fire crews racing to put out a huge fire in two buildings in Meriden. Good evening, I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, firefighters have been working for more than two hours and they're still at the industrial building on Pratt Street right now. Let's go right on to Fox 61's Gabby Molina. She joins us live at the scene. Gabby, what have you learned so far? Ben and Jen, this fire is massive. I'll step out of the way so you can take a look behind me because fire crews have been working hard for several hours since that call first came in at 7.55 tonight to get this fire under control. And you can see where they're shooting the water on top of this building. There's a flame there that just will not go out. But we have been seeing firefighters attack this building from all angles with flames coming out of all sides of this building as well. Now, we are told that the fire started in a vacant building at 169. Pratt Street. Fire crews did have to rescue one person from inside, though they say it's not clear why that person was inside the building since it is a vacant building. Officials say that the fire then spread to a second part of the building that does have a plating company inside of it. And again, this is a really massive fire. Now, we do have some video from a little bit earlier tonight that shows a massive cloud of smoke billowing out of this building. We could see it on 691 as we started to approach this area of Meriden. There was also, again, flames showing from several parts of this building. Now, again, we don't know of any injuries at this point. One person did have to be rescued from the building, but it is a vacant building, and crews were called here at 7.55 tonight. Now, the Meriden Fire Department is getting a lot of help in responding to this fire. We are told that there is probably about a dozen crews from as far as Hartford responding to this fire. So it is all hands on deck to try to get this fire under control. And again, we still have seen some hot spots shooting up out of the roof of that building, out of the side of the building. So they really are still attacking it from all angles. And there's been a lot of curiosity, a lot of people coming out to see the flames. So we're going to stay on top of this breaking news and bring you updates as we get them. Live in Meriden, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Sounds like it's going to be a long night for firefighters. Gabby, thank you and keep us updated. Well, we are also following breaking news tonight out of Plymouth, where an arrest was made in a deadly shooting at a gas station in town. It happened in the Terryville section of Plymouth last night, and people living there are shaken up after hearing the gunshots. Before she went to Meriden, Fox 61's Gabby Molina was in Plymouth speaking with those neighbors about what happened. It was it was a traumatic experience to have to see that so close to home. Neighbors along Burnham Street in Terryville still processing the shock of hearing gunshots outside of their homes. You don't expect like gunfire in the middle of the night and having to like take cover because it's like, oh, you know, bullets don't have any name. A quiet neighborhood made up of families, many with children. It was completely out of the ordinary. No, not around here. Like it's quiet around here. I like it here. But Thursday night, their sense of security was shaken. When police say a man was shot and killed at the Gulf Station on Main Street, 40-year-old Charles Whitfield Jr. of Terryville is charged with murder for the death of 42-year-old Philip Harris of New Britain. A neighbor who didn't want to be identified says he saw the immediate aftermath of the shooting. I heard arguing outside and I didn't really think anything of it. And then I started hearing the gun go off, so I peeked out the window and uh, I saw the man backing up with the handgun in his hand. Police were quickly able to take the suspect into custody. Hopped on his phone, he didn't leave. Uh, as soon as the cops came here, he got on the ground, he didn't resist or anything. Police say the suspect and the victim knew each other and there's no danger to the public. But neighbors say the incident has still left them feeling nervous. To have gunshots near here, especially in a community that I thought was pretty safe, I mean, a little scary. As for Whitfield, he's being held on a $2 million bond. He was arraigned on Friday. Reporting in Plymouth, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Let's get back to the weather watcher. Not only did we make it to the weekend, 
felt like it took a little while, mm -hmm. but we made it through the gray and yes. the clouds. There were plenty of them. Yeah, and uh, now we have sunshine to look forward to and some warmth, Rachel. Yeah, if we're going to be sunny, warmer, drier, and the weather's going to change in a big way, it might as well happen just in time for the weekend. We so deserve it. We actually just got through two weeks worth of cooler than average temperatures and often on rain. You could see this shower in the distance earlier today captured from our Hartford City Cam. Really cool because it was illuminated by sunshine on either side. You could actually see that rain shaft coming down. Satellite and radar showing you a few of those showers that came through earlier. But they're a distant memory now. Let's forget about those. Right now we're in the 40s to right around 50 degrees. As we head through the overnight hours, we'll see temperatures drop into the low to mid 40s as we head towards daybreak. Embrace yourself. You're going to have to find the sunglasses. They've probably been hidden in your car somewhere or in your bag. You're going to need them tomorrow. What is this? Sunshine from start to finish. And we'll see high temperatures up around 70 degrees, not only inland, but at the Connecticut shoreline as well, because we'll have a northerly breeze. We should be able to kind of battle that sea breeze. It is going to be even warmer for Sunday, but we have a few more clouds. We'll take a full look at your weekend forecast and the next chance for more rain coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. New at 10 tonight, we're learning more about the future of the COVID-19 pandemic after a big announcement from the World Health Organization. The WHO says the global public health emergency is over, but that doesn't mean that COVID-19 is gone. Fox 61's Jake Garcia joins us in studio tonight to explain why. Hey, Jake. Hey, Ben and Jen. Today's announcement by global health leaders marks a new phase in the pandemic. Experts say that just because the global health emergency is over does not mean that the pandemic is over. The situation has markedly improved with less mortality and an increased immunity against the virus. Health officials ending the emergency largely in part to an increase in vaccinations, which global health leaders say has stopped large scale outbreaks in most countries. But doctors say you shouldn't let your guard down. This virus is here to stay. It's still killing and it's still changing. The risk remains of a new of new variants emerging. Connecticut health officials echoing that same message. The state's public health commissioner released a statement saying, quote, it's important to note that despite these announcements, the COVID-19 virus has not been eliminated. Going on to urge people to continue to get boosted, stay home when sick and use masks when needed. The global health emergency was in place for over three years. January 20th of 2020, the CDC confirmed the first case of COVID-19 in the U.S. Ten days later, the first case by a person-to-person -person infection was recorded in the U.S. In February of 2020, Governor Lamont reacting to the rapid spread of the virus. This thing is breaking fast. Uh, you probably um, you know, know it was really just detected a couple of months ago, found out that there was person-to-person -person contact contagion just uh, a month ago. Then March 11th, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. A week later, everything came to a halt. Stay safe, stay at home, unless you're involved in some essential service. By May 28th of 2020, the number of COVID deaths in the U.S. surpassed 100,000. And by June 1st of 2022, the known death toll from COVID passed 1 million in the U.S. And the federal government is set to end its health emergency next Thursday, though most COVID restrictions are over. And according to Connecticut's public health department, in the last week there have been more than 300 positive tests. Six people have been released from the hospital and no deaths from COVID. In studio, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. A long haul it has certainly been, Jake. Thank you. New Haven police say a Meriden man was killed this morning right near the corner of Congress Avenue and Vernon Street. Officers found 45-year-old Jatu Kambuke Gar Garrett with several gunshot wounds just after 6.30. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Investigators are looking for his killer tonight. We need to catch this person. Um, we've been doing very well catching people, and I think that's going to help us uh, limit the violence because when people know they're going to get caught if they kill someone in the city, I think that's an important message. Chief Carl Jacobson also says investigators have video of the shooting. Anyone with information should call New Haven Police. A 23-year-old man is dead tonight and several others seriously injured after two cars crashed in Bloomfield. Police say both cars were speeding when they went off Blue Hills Avenue this morning. One car crashed into a utility pole and broke it, while the other caught on fire after hitting a building. The driver of that car, the car that caught fire, and the one 
uh, of the people in the in the other car have life-threatening injuries. Three other people have serious injuries. We have an update tonight as the hiker who went missing on the Appalachian Trail in Kent has been found safe. State police say 60-year-old Marta Renee Bowen was located by rescuers today. She's been missing since Wednesday morning. Bowen is receiving treatment, but her condition's unknown as of tonight. All right, we are following some breaking news here in the sports world tonight. The Hartford Wolfpack are moving on in the AHL playoffs. Yeah, after failing to sweep Providence and losing Wednesday night, the Pack bounced back to beat the Bruins. Some big news here. Mm -hmm. Fox 61 Sports Director Jonah Karp was at the game earlier tonight. He joins us in the breaking news center to tell us about what happened. Jonah. Hey, Ben and Jen. Well, the Pack got out to a slow start in Game 3, and they lost 6-3. to three. A different story tonight, with Hartford getting on top of the P Bruins first. Turner Ellison got the Pack started less than four minutes into the game. Hartford led one zip into the second period until Jake LeCizan got them a much-needed insurance goal about five minutes into the second frame. He'd also score an empty netter in the third, and the Wolfpack shut out Providence 4-0. Nothing. The Wolfpack will take on Hershey in the Atlantic Division Finals after beating the Bears, or after, after the Bears rather beat Charlotte in four games. And we'll have much more on the Pack's big win later on in sports. In the Breaking News Center, Jonah Carp, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.